Uh, welcome to the Park and Recreation Commission regular meeting of September 21st, 2023. The time is 610. Uh, Becky, can you please call roll? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Cabrales. I don't think she's there yet. Um, and Commissioner Emerson, I don't see her either yet. Um, Chair Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Machado? Sure. And Commissioner Sandoval. Here. All right, Becky, can you explain how the public can participate in the meeting, please? Yeah, of course. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raise hand if you wish to speak. If you're participating by telephone and wish to speak, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified by the host inviting you to participate. You need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you're unmuted, you'll have three minutes to provide your comments. All right, um, let's call agenda num item number one, the approval of regular meeting minutes. Um, any questions um, from the commission? Nope. nope. Any public comment on minutes, Becky? We do not have any attendees on Zoom. Okay, uh, can I get a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes? Motion to approve. Second. All right, Becky, roll call vote. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Chair Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Machado? Yep. And Commissioner Sandoval? Yes. All right, motion approved, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, is there any public comment for matters not listed on the agenda? Uh, tonight, are you just on the agenda? Yes, yeah. yeah. Becky, anybody online? No, we do not have anyone online. Okay, um, then we'll close public comment. Uh, let's go ahead and it looks like we're gonna go to some introduction. Yeah, I just wanted to take a minute before we uh jumped into the rest of the agenda to introduce a couple cases. One is we're happy to have Catherine to keep them back and then Catherine, I'm gonna go over you with some uh, sure. I guess I'll. <laughs> oh, oh, right now, we just that. like one after right on, Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> well, let's use John Stefanski, who's the new one of our new uh, assistant city managers. So, yeah. Anything yeah uh, hi, everyone. John Stefanski. Uh, I've been with the city now for eight weeks. Uh, I'm loving it so far. Uh, as assistant city manager, I'll be uh, responsible for overseeing library and rec, as well as uh, emergency management sustainability and uh, park and services, and then a whole host of other duties as assigned, uh, as you can imagine. But I'm really excited to be here. Uh, love San Rafael, and I'm uh, looking forward to learning more about what uh, the commission's working on. Thank you. Welcome. And this is Jill Tokutomi. Jill is our Craig counterpart in the library. So they're the assistant library and recreation director slash city librarian. Uh, yeah. Good to be here. Um, and I've been with San Rafael for the, with the city since 2015 and in my current role interim since January and um, permanent since March. Sorry if you have a hard time hearing me. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome. Welcome. And I think Hi. we'll do these introductions when we get to the next agenda item, but did you want to, I feel we need to announce the changes to the agenda. Yeah, I think it, uh, we have one group, unfortunately, that's unable to make it today. The Santa Rafael Girls Softball was on the agenda, and they had a, a last-minute change. So, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to present it tonight. Um, so, I'm going to recommend that we postpone that presentation for a later date. That sounds good. Um, uh, if there's anything we need to do to officially agendize that, I think just make that coming. Yeah, we look forward to hearing from them. In the future. Uh, so it looks like we're moving on to our next agenda item, which is a special presentation from the Library Foundation. Okay, so and I'll ended. start before <laughs> I'll go ahead and introduce the foundation and give you all a little background information. You guys can't see. Come up closer over here. It's funny. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit. Um, we have some special guests here today, uh, in, in addition to myself and John. Um, from our library foundation, and they're going to share a little bit about their support for a new downtown library. And um, at the library, we have three support groups. We have our friends of the Santa Fe Public Library who um, raise money for us through book sales. So they have a cute little store um, right across from Fox and Kit on C Street, D Street maybe. Um, and they also do lawn sales, and through all of those sales, they are able to fund all of our summer reading programs, um, in addition to other enrichment programs throughout the year. Um, they help fund supplies for outreach, and they help fund special collections that we're interested in piloting. Um, we also have the Board of Trustees, so that's similar to this group. It's a, um, we have monthly public meetings. They're made up of San Rafael um, residents who kind of represent the community, their advisories. So they're just listening to library matters, asking questions, providing comment, and any member of the public who, want, who wants to join can join and also do the same. Um, and then we have the foundation and the foundation is a nonprofit and their sole mission and the reason they were formed was to assist the city in efforts to build a new library. Been at it for a while. <laughs> so they was for, they were formed in 2004. Um, they're comprised of different community members. Um, we have a council member representative, Mary Beth Bushy, um, and staff liaison. So that's generally Patrick and I will come. Uh, they work on actively raising funds to advocate for a new library. It's not so much funds to go towards a new building because it would be pretty difficult to raise the amount of money that they would need to do that but they do raise money that they can then use to do advocacy, education, um, recently uh, surveys, and recently they did a really beautiful, they hired a film crew to do a really beautiful documentary about our need for a new library downtown, um, and then followed by an advertising blitz to put that in front of likely voters. And that was just, there's, since there's nothing on the ballot or anything at this time, that was just education, like we have a problem, and. What are we going to do about it? Um, another piece of background information is that uh, the city has done a number of community survey surveys or polls um, to assess community support for a new library. Most recently in 2023, um, Godby Research uh, did outside research forum firm did a uh, statistically valid survey where they pulled a split sample. So half of the group was asked if they would support a parcel tax measure that would fund a new, or not a new, but a renovated and expanded Carnegie Library. And the other half was asked if they would support a parcel tax to fund um, a new, brand new combined library and community center here at this location at B Street. Um, and through that survey, it came out that there was viable options for both um, through different avenues. And why the foundation is here tonight is that um, pretty unanimously as a group, they support uh, the Albert Park option. So they support the combined community center and library here at B Street. Um, and they have been going around to different stakeholders, such as the Parks and Commission Committee, the foundation, the Friends of the Library, to just um, present why and share their passion and um, get feedback and comments and answer any questions. So um, Craig and Catherine have invited myself and also the foundation members to do a presentation for you today. And I think that's the end of my presentation, so I'll turn it over. So um, we have Cheryl and Joe here and I'll let you guys take it away. Thank you, Jill. Do you want to argue? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm Cheryl Lentini. Um, I've been a resident of San Rafael since 1999, and I've served on the Design Review Board, and I've been on the foundation for some time, and I was a trustee for one term. And um, so that's kind of my role now. I'm just on the foundation, and 
you know, working toward this. So we did put together this presentation that we want to show you. Um, so I'm going to let Joe introduce himself. Right. Well, good evening and thank you for your time. Um, Joe O'Hare, and I'm a member of the Samaritan Bell Public Library Foundation. I've been on six to seven years. And um, prior to I, I'm retired, but prior to that, I was CEO of Bibelon, known as Whistlestop by most people here. Got a little project going a few blocks down here that is uh, finally coming where we'll have a healthy aging campus there um, with residents living there and also uh, we'll be participating in programs over here. So um, I, uh, like Cheryl, um, we, we've been working with our board on you know, sort of what to do and, and sort of how to help the city get, you know, what we think is a new need for 21st century library services. And we think in addition to that, we're seeing in many communities, the combination of community centers and libraries. We certainly have an example right in our own community of Pickleweed. And it, as you, many of you know, it's been a very successful integration of these two very important community needs within uh, sort of one campus. So I'll turn it back over to Cheryl, who's going to sort of Could take us through the presentation. presentation? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you had seen the film that we had produced, but um, I thought maybe we could just start by clicking on the link and showing it. Um, I think it's about eight minutes. So it's a, it's a really, I think that the filmmaker did a really great job and I think Jill was amazing. Um, so <laughs> if you click on that, why a new library to go straight to the link to play. Hopefully you should. I can also share it with Cheryl. The link is the second one is sharing the whole thing. Becky, can you confirm you can see the screen here? Sorry about that. Um, I do see a screen. It looks like it says, a, oh, there it is. Why a new library for San Rafael. Yep, I see it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit play on the video here. <laughs> Public libraries are the hub of any community because it's a place where people can come to get information and knowledge and resources, and it's also a place for community connection. Public libraries are more essential than ever before. We're not just a building that houses physical items. We're a place for human beings to come and get services, and we are also on the cutting edge of emergent technologies, and we always have been. Once I came to California, San Rafael, and I thought that's a library is a fantastic place. I never had a library where you could bring your computer and have somebody help you place an order. Para mí son de gran importancia porque es donde yo encuentro el material para yo poder hacer mis pinturas. It's a literary nutrient. I feel like I get fed here. I love coming to the library because it's somewhere peaceful and I can read, like really read. I can get into it. The San Rafael Public Library has been the heart of our community for over a hundred years. In 1909, Andrew Carnegie funded the building in our downtown area. In 1959, that the library was expanded, and that was the last major addition of useful space, except for in 1976, we enclosed the expansion's parking garage to create what is now our children's area. Obviously, our community has changed drastically since then. Went from around 20,000 residents to over 61,000. We're much more diverse. We have different needs and if you can think about what the world might have been like in 1959 or remember what it was like that's the world that this library was built for not the one we're in today people that don't use public libraries might think that they're outdated or unnecessary with google and amazon but they're actually more important than ever and they're not just for people that love books and reading we see hundreds of patrons coming into our doors at our three library locations every day. We can check out video games to patrons, 
patrons who love movies can use our streaming services or get DVDs. We have museum passes and park passes for people to check out. We also have free public computing and Wi-Fi, digital resources that support students and local authors, and we have art literature and cultural programs for people of all ages. Our staff are doing amazing work. They're having to be really creative um, given the limitations of the building that we have. I can only imagine how much more we could offer if we had a building that supported our needs. Our three locations total 17,500 square feet of floor space, which with a population of 62,000 works out to less than 0.3 square feet per resident. A recent analysis commissioned by the city recommended that we have at least 45 to 50,000 square feet of library service space, equivalent to about 0.8 square feet per resident. If we compare that to our neighbors, it's clear that we need more space. We need to practically triple our square footage to come in line with other libraries in the Bay Area and help our library staff to innovate, create more meaningful programs and community partnerships, and move with the times from this century into the next. We took a trip across the Bay to the Hayward Public Library, which was completed in 2022. When you walk in, you're immediately struck by a harmony between visitor experience and the feature-rich design, which opens up to a new frontier of possibilities for thriving community life. Over here is City Hall, where we use the council chamber to host our story time because we don't have space in our building for programming. As you can see here, we have a tarp. This leads down to our mystery section, and we have a massive leak in our roof, so the tarp helps to protect our collection. This is our children's room. Um, this was part of our 1959 expansion, and as you can see, it actually used to be a garage. Here is a back exit. You can see we have books and also boxes um, that just showcases our lack of storage. This is our staff workspace. It's very cramped. We have lots of people bringing in cards. Here's our printer. This is my office right here. Here's an aisle um, of our adult fiction collection. Uh, the, it's very tight and cramped. The shelves are very high to house all of our books. Um, they block off any natural light that might be coming through the windows. Uh, this house is our whole teen collection here. There's no space for teens to do any programming. There's barely space for them to study. So you can see the teen collection spills out into the adult area as well. These are our public computers. Um, the screens are out, they're cramped. It's not a great place to get your work done. It's not quiet. So we have local artists that use our space. And it would be so great if we had space where we could uh, showcase the work of local artists and if they could also um, have a space to do their work. We asked some of the San Rafael staff and patrons what they would like to change or modernize. This is our office where we sometimes have as many as four people in here, um, you know, doing all sorts of different things, including um, holding meetings, eating lunch, preparing for a program, and it's, it's very tight. At our downtown library, we have no event location. We have to throw people out of the reading room to have an event. If we had like these little maybe bean bags where we could sit. That would be awesome. We would have a not a small place for adults who want a quiet space for reading or to do some studies. People don't have a place to have a job interview. We don't have any set meeting rooms right now. And so we're just outgrowing the space. There's no there's no room for us to expand anymore. And if you can't expand, you can't attract more patrons. The role of a public library is to bridge inequities in our community and connect our residents to technologies and other resources that they wouldn't otherwise have access to. <laughs> Uh, 
Unfortunately, our 19th century library building is not supporting our 21st century needs and with more space, we can do so much more. Our patrons love and use our downtown library and many people don't know what a modern library can and should look like and that's what our community deserves. So that's the film we put together and the social media campaign that went with it. And you know, part of the reason we decided to do it was because after years of studies and surveys that the city has been doing on library expansion, new libraries, new library branch expansions, um, you know, nothing was happening. And part of what seemed to come back in the surveys, especially when people commented, you know, at times it did seem like people just didn't really understand that there was need or what a modern library was like or why we needed more space. And so, you know, we thought before the city does another survey, <laughs> we really ought to try <laughs> getting some education out there and see if that makes a difference. And um, it really seemed like, I think one of the reasons we're here talking to you is because it did appear to make a difference. And the latest survey that um, Jill referred to um, showed a, a definite shift in support. And that's kind of led us as a foundation to kind of be in this moment where, you know, we may not have an opportunity like this again. I mean, hearing from the consultants that run the surveys that this is the best it's ever been in 10 years of surveying in terms of a level of potential support. So um, Craig, do you wanna go to the next slide? So, you know, we've just put together a few slides here to share some of the information that brought us to the point we're at. And what we're contemplating is based on the recent survey, um, pulling the two different options, uh, the Carnegie expansion and renovation, you know, pulled at around what 61-ish percent. Um, and the Albert Park solution pulled lower, but after people go through the survey process and answer, you know, a bunch more questions and are re-asked the question at the end. The Carnegie went down a couple of points, but the Albert Park went up notably um, to bring them like within the margin of error of being roughly equivalent. Carnegie still pulls higher at the outset, but neither of them gets to the two thirds majority that would be necessary for a regular bond measure. So we're kind of faced with, you know, what now? Um, you know, the city is, you know, really not in a position to pursue something that still pulls quite that low. I mean, it would take quite a heavy lift with no opposition, you know, to basically move on the Carnegie solution. And we looked at that and we thought, you know, going through this, so let's, we'll go through a couple of slides and kind of tell you like why we ended up in, at sort of the Albert Park support. Um, so back in 2019, uh, Nolentown Architects was hired by the city to do an analysis, you know, after the city had done some studies to understand, you know, what were the recommendations, how many how much library space should we have? Nolan Tan did a study um, kind of taking that information and bringing it forward to sort of understand how should that square footage be arrayed across San Rafael and specifically, you know, what would be likely sites for a downtown library and branch libraries. So they started here and then on the next slide, um, Looking at the downtown library, um, they identified after studying several sites, they boiled it down to three sites to look at, obviously the existing Carnegie location, um, this location, Albert Park and Boyd Park. Um, because of the limitations of the Boyd Park site, they quickly eliminated it. Um, that particular site could really only get about 20,000 square feet. And to kind of make that full complement of space, that just really wasn't going to get you there. And it had a lot of other issues, you know, with its location and traffic and parking. So that was quickly abandoned. And that kind of left the Carnegie and Albert Park solutions. Um, so on the next slide, this is a little bit more in depth of what they looked at for the Carnegie. And, you know, we started looking at this and seeing that you know, basically their recommendation was you would take off all the later additions, you know, and, and restore the original Carnegie footprint. And in order, again, to get the recommended square footage or come up close to it, you'd basically be adding a very thin, you know, three-story addition on the back 
um, so you can see that you're pretty confined, you're pretty landlocked on that site. And so one of our concerns is that, okay, great, you can do that today, but you know, in 10 more years, we're going to be right back where, you know, San Rafael was not long after the Carnegie was built originally, where, where are we going to go from here? You know, should the city continue growing? Um, so if we continue on, um, when they studied Albert Park, and this is actually the second study that they did. Once they kind of identified Albert Park as a possibility, you know, everyone realized like, well, we we know a lot about the Carnegie and what it might be like to add an addition, but we don't know anything about Albert Park and a joint community center library. What does that look like? So in 2021, the city commissioned Nolan Tan to again study in greater depth what that actually could be. So this is some of the um, graphics that they produced in this study. And Basically, they developed a block diagram and a site plan for creating a joint library and community center that has a series of dedicated space for each entity, as well as some shared space. It preserves the Lanatese Garden, um, you know, creates parking um, throughout the site, kind of, you know, connects to the field, you know, maintains the playground, um, and basically the main entrance is kind of facing the, the parkland area. Um, so next, you can see a little bit about how that breaks down. Um, with this proposal, they would be able to get 23,000 square feet dedicated to the library, plus the additional 7,000 shared square foot feet and 13 and a half square feet, 1,000 square feet for the community center. And they did budgets, they updated those budgets. This particular proposal also included an alternate that if you wanted even more space, you know, you could do a, a, another story. And so that's where they left that study. Um, so then next, um, these are just some of the renderings that they did as part of this. You can get an idea how that sits on the site. There's a couple of these, there's this one, and there's another view from the exterior along B Street. And then finally, they have a view inside the main reading room. And these, uh, this study uh, never really went anywhere. Um, you know, everything just kind of stopped at that point and kind of held again. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, kind of where we are is, you know, after considering all of this and this moment in time, the way that the only way that a bond measure could really go forward with an Albert Park project is by a citizen's initiative process. And so we're contemplating whether we as the foundation, you know, kind of take that on and, you know, what would it require? Do we have the finances to do it? How would we set ourselves up? Could we be successful? Do we have the time, you know, to get something on the November 2024 ballot? And, you know, we looked at this and just sort of think that in terms of kind of the heart of our community with the schools that are nearby, you know, the, the sports fields, tennis courts, bocce courts, free school, it, it just, the, the senior housing going up just around the corner, it just seemed to us that this has such greater potential as a joint facility for our community than just adding an addition and expanding the existing Carnegie location. So that's kind of where we're coming from. And we've been, as Jill mentioned, talking to the different groups that support the library and wanted to talk to you since you'd be the kind of community center side of things and just kind of find out like, you know, what your thoughts are, concerns are, you know, if you think this would be something that you could support. Um, so that, that's really sort of our objective in coming here today. Joe, do you want to add yeah, anything? I would like to, thanks. Sorry. Thanks. That's okay. <laughs> sure. yeah. and, uh, I fail to mention I've been a resident for 33 years in San Rafael, so I'm very familiar. And um, one of the things I learned in doing the Healthy Aging Campus Project, that you know, all elect officials have the best intentions to make everything work. But when you really get community support behind a project, it makes it easier for them to say yes. You know, in the city council, you need to vote three and you've got to get there. And what I've learned, and, and Cheryl certainly has learned on projects that she's worked on, if you really get the community behind a, a, a vision like this, then it's easier for the city to really move forward. The other thing that, um, and Cheryl mentioned, the, the citizens initiative, this is going to take a combination of private funding, which is really what we do. We can raise money uh, as a 501c3 nonprofit charitable and, and contribute that money to a new building. 
and though we're going to need some public financing, as, as Cheryl mentioned. Now, if the city was to do a tax measure, they need, uh, if the city does it, my understanding is that it requires two thirds approval from the voters. And 60, you've got to be up over 66 and a half percent. What we looked at uh, with some advice from people that have been working on these type of tax measures, not only here in San Rafael, but all around the Bay Area, is that the other alternative is, is to do what Cheryl mentioned is a citizen's initiative. And a citizen's initiative, if you get it onto the ballot, only requires a simple majority approval. So that means you'd only have to get over 50% on the vote. And why is that important? Because there are so many things happening and so much to be voted on and so many needs are that um, we felt that uh, this was just something we wanted to explore. So we've been working with uh, consultants that are experts in this. And I, I just quickly just describe um, our other ask of you is that if you, what we've really got, got to do is get the community behind this project. And when you, what we do is we, we create a ballot initiative. We do, we do a draft of the ballot initiative that is first, we have formally applied to the city. And this is going to take, you know, it takes about three months to get that type of work done. And our foundation, we have the funding and we're paying to get this ballot initiative draft uh, that could be presented to the city. That's kind of the first step in a citizen's initiative. The next one, which is the most important, which we're gonna need a lot of community involvement is, that once you submit an application, you also have to submit a list, a certified list of at least 10% of the registered voters within the city of San Rafael that would, are signing to say, we support this initiative. So you've got 32,000, a little over 32,000 registered voters in San Rafael. And so 10% would be 3,200, but the experts, because of, you want to do about 10% more. So the, the number that we would look to do is if we move forward, we submit this initiative, we have to present to the city almost about 4,200 valid registered voter signatures that say we're behind this. So that allows the city then to review, finally do the final review and accept uh, the citizen initiative to go on to the November 2024 ballot. So the reason we're talking to you, we're backing up. If you look at the November 24 ballot, we have to be sort of done with all of this work for the city you know, in the March, April timeframe. And then it can be placed into what would be considered the ballot that would be happening. Why do we go for the November 24th one versus uh, the off years? Most pollsters or election officials will tell you when it's a national election, there's a greater voter turnout, and they have a tendency to also vote for the local initiatives. In the off times, you sometimes it's a lot more challenging because you don't have as many people voting, and people that oppose something like that, therefore, can have a greater impact. That's why we look at the November 2024 20, national election. Plus, in as Cheryl said, this is a, a window of opportunity based upon some of the education and advocacy we've been doing on this. So, it's really imagine that what we're trying to do in this next six months is get the community excited about this, supporting it, and getting enough that want to say yes, we we want to we want to sign, we're willing to sign and support that. So that's a lot of the work that um, we as a foundation need to do, but we need to work with a lot of other constituents to get this out there. So that's why we're here today and what our time frame looks like. Um, and uh, that's why we just wanted to describe what we're trying to do. Obviously, it's very key for you guys to support this because we've gone now from just a library to a combination of the community center. And we really feel that this could be, you know, with, with, with the in, in epidemics of loneliness and isolation post COVID, what, what, what they're finding in cities and towns, you guys probably know, the more community gathering spaces that are safe and that people of different generations, intergenerational can come together that's what's really going to deal with this loneliness and isolation crisis that we have, not only in our country, but in our local community. So just imagine, you know, having that type of campus here for this community. We're, we're very excited about it, and that's what we wanted to share. And we'd love to hear your initial thoughts and questions. Amazing. 
Thank you. Um, Let's go. <laughs> all right, I like that. <laughs> um, all right, so why don't we go ahead and open some questions, uh, comments from the commission? Um, oh, yeah. oh, can't <laughs> 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 So, uh, uh, I would imagine you've spoken to the other locales that have done this in the Mill Valley, and and how how heavy of a lift was it? For them, and is there a, a roadmap that they use or things to stay away from? And, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, probably the one mark we most paid attention to was Larkspur, even though it's of a smaller scale. If you may know what Larkspur did, there was a new uh, community development, residential development uh, at Rose Lane. I think you're familiar with that's right across from downtown. And part of their, you know, a lot of these developers have to give community concessions. And part of that was to use that land. To do a combination library community center. Um, the original library is very small. It sits in downtown. It's in a, it is in a fairly historic building there. Um, and again, they 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 created a group like ours, like a foundation, got the lead, raised some money. Uh, their project obviously is much smaller than this on a grand scale. Right. But and and so that my understanding is they are ready to break ground because they raised the money, the city got behind it. Once the city saw that the community supported it and put money into it, they were willing to put the money in from the city of Larkspur to make it happen. You know? So we've been talking to them. It was, it was again, a grassroots movement um, that got them to be to the point where they could move ahead as, as the city, as the owner, as, as the developer of the project. So yeah. we've talked to them. I mean, you know, Tiburon has done a great job of expanding, uh, you know, their if you look at all, most of the communities around San Rafael, particularly even in the last election, most approved sort of enhancing enhancements or expansions. The county did, San Anselmo did. These are these are aging infrastructure uh, buildings. We just have a bigger challenge because, as you saw on that slide, we're so locally behind in square footage. Given the, the our project is much larger, but they're still built around. Most of those were done by community grassroots movement that kind of just said to the sit with the cities and towns, we've got the support here for ready. Right? When you look at that Hayward uh, facility. Yeah. Yeah, we got John. We got a little we got a guy over there in the, the I, I used to work in there. That, that, yeah. that, that's pretty that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean it's like it's like being on a big college campus or something like yeah. that. Right? Yeah. 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 As far as uh, library is concerned. So I think that uh, I think that you should be able to get that support. Right. Yeah. We also yeah. and what we we did <laughs> when we did the documentary. We also did a what's called a media blitz, and I mean, some of you may have seen it. We did almost a million impressions out before the poll went up. Uh, the challenge with the poll that we found was that it still was asking. It was a split poll, so because the city still wasn't sure where the community sat, um, and so we think that even in a split poll with very little information about Albert Park, the more we talked about it, the the pollsters did the more people got excited about it so you know everybody knows the carnegie they know where it is it's an incredible building the other thing we want to bring up though is that we're really willing as part of our thing to work with the city to make sure that if we move ahead with this project that we repurpose the carnegie building mm -hmm. cheryl has done a great study around the country there are what, a couple hundred carnegie buildings that were built in 1900s and many communities have repurposed them for community events or space like that. We we uh, we saw one particularly in Snohomish up near Seattle that basically, and once they built their new library, repurposed the, their Carnegie building and it became an event center for small nonprofits to use, the community to use. So we want to make sure that we're we're paying homage to the Carnegie and it served this community beautifully, and we just want to we'll, we'll help to make sure that. That, that is part that the community understands that building's not going away. We're just going to repurpose it. This is what we see as the vision for a real, almost a kind of community learning center here for all ages and a place where people can come and feel safe and 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 really just be able to be engaged in it. Thank you. Um, on the repurposing issue, is that Part of this same initiative, or is that something the city then decides on its own, like a different process? Yeah, I think you know the city's the owner of that. We just want to be very sensitive because the city, obviously, um, you know, we all really want to honor the heritages that we have in this, but we just want to make sure that 
the community knows we're not just abandoning that building, you know, because there are people that will, you know, that really want to make sure that our historical buildings remain usable. Um, there is work, you know, Jill's doing work on the building, even though the work she's doing is just repairing the structure so that it's safe and dry. And so that, that money that's going into it is going to make it even more attractive for repurposing. That fair to say. Yeah, we have a about three million dollars. It's a mixture of grant funds from the state library and city funds um, to fix the roof, update the HVAC. Um, and there's a little money left over to kind of shine it up and make it nice. And we are focusing. The architects have made the decision to focus most of that in the Carnegie half and not the expansion with the thought that either if it gets expanded into a new library, that's the part that will remain, or if it gets repurposed, that's the part we really want to keep. Um, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm in full support. I, you know, I'm glad to see that you guys are coming to us with this because it's been sort of shelved and I'm yeah. totally in full support of Albert Park. And um, I do think that you can get the community support that you want, especially if you leverage the school communities. Like yeah, David said, as, really I'm, as parents, mm -hmm. with two kids in high school, middle school, I'm happy to like work on the PTO. <laughs> Good. So <laughs> for, but I, I don't think that's going to be the issue. Yeah. I guess my question for you is more that just one thing is just the recommendations to make sure you have advertising when you actually do yes. the measure to like, because we at the county, we had a ballot measure for kids and it failed. And so there was a countermeasure that didn't advertise and then it was the Trump election. Oh, so you really have yeah. to make sure you have to put the money aside yeah. to make sure that the people yeah. know what they, you know, they vote for. Um, yeah, that's what we're Like don't, don't underestimate no. the importance of it. No. So, <laughs> yeah. We actually um, have reached out to um, Charles. He helped us with, um, you know, the, the recent sort of gathering of information, yeah. did the recent survey, and, you know, he's got a lot of experience. We actually right. are going to bring him on as, like, our project manager to help us with to make sure yeah. that our strategy extends all the way up until Election Day. Yeah. Um, so we know yeah. that it can't, like, let's just say we're successful with the citizen right. initiative. It doesn't end there. Right. <laughs> so, right. yeah. We're mindful of that. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I just... Having yeah. some things that was really took a long time fail. Yeah. Really sad. And then you saw the measure A parks where they did yeah. a really good job, but and then here it is, it's still here. Yep. So um, and then my other question for you is, you know, I know this is like way, I mean, I'm I'm it's like, you know, this is the blue sky day, it's all gonna work out. Like, what would be the timeline and how much money would the city have to match? How much money are you looking to raise? And, you that's know, what we're, the ballot yeah, measure. I mean, what what are we looking that's at? That's what we're looking at um these next few months to yeah. actually craft. Um Right. Uh, at least I can tell you, like, from the estimates that Nolan Tan did, the Albert Park project brought to today's dollars is, like, approaching $80 million. Mm -hmm. So it is not inexpensive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've gotten questions from the other groups we've met with so far, too. Like, what about Pickleweed? You know, part of the earlier study that they did showed, like, a 5,000 square foot expansion of Pickleweed as well. And there are some people we've talked to who are really concerned, like, well, you're going to do something with Pickleweed, too. So we have a lot that we need to consider in the next couple months as we craft and probably try and test different, you know, language, yeah. different price points. So yeah, I mean, that's our work for next year is to really figure that out. And, and just on a follow to say your point, um, I've heard through working with you now, learning way too much about ballot initiatives and I'm not yeah. in my retirement, but uh, <laughs> that um, if you have opposition, they say you have to outspend that opposition four times yeah. as much. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Particularly for tax measures, because mm -hmm. you know tax measures are tough. They're oh, just the economic. economics. So yeah. uh, I think we're we're eyes wide open on that. Um, and uh, but um, I, I do think I do think you know we have got to take what Noel and Tam have done, and really you know Cheryl and other experts really kind of fine tune this. But it's you know it's it's going to be a big project, and yet. I think uh, it's big because it's been so long. You know, it's been 37 years since anything has been done with our library structures. I used to take my kids here a long time ago, yeah. 33 years ago, in the same yeah. building, and it, it's still the same. So, I mean, you got we're facing, but I think with community support and vision, I think you know, if you look at really what's needed, these are two very cherished services of the, of the community that just need to be upgraded and, and need to be able to provide the facility that's going to provide the best and, and most, uh, most effective use of that money. No, no, I, 
Like, I grew up in Mill Valley. Okay, the library there is amazing. Yeah, right? yes, it is. Yeah, Berkeley. Yeah, a lot of yes, new libraries. Yeah, so yes, yes, love it. But I also wanted to um, I wanted to have another question for you, which is: that, Is there any corporate support that you have for your foundations through Biomarin or any of our local foundations? Yeah, I mean, we would. We we don't at this point. It's been mainly individuals. Uh -huh. Um, who just you know support library services. We've had a couple of. They're called bequests we've received from um, yeah. trusts and things like that. But this would require, in addition to this whole initiative, right. we as a foundation would have to do a capital campaign. Yeah. To answer your question, Mark, that's you have to match. There has to be local funding, and the, and and that drives the the yes votes, if you will, particularly from the city council. So we would be doing a capital campaign. For how much I do not know. I have experience because we kind of do a capital campaign to help the aging campus. So we raised about $14 million for that, which allowed it to be you know, approved. But we, and we worked with Bob Marin because we had to work with them as corporate. So, I mean, you've got to look at, you know, I, you have to get the Chamber of Commerce behind this, the business community. It's a full capital. You have a lot campaign. more meetings to do. Yeah. yeah. But we need to get to that. We've got to have something to present as the big, big idea. And what what's in it for them? You know, obviously, we look at a corporation or a company here. You know, they're trying to attract new families, new new employees. Right. These type of services, just like a good school system, they look at what are the community services that are going to attract the employees that they need. So that's how we approach. You know, that's just an example of how you approach why yeah. why this is important to Biomarin. Why is it important to the other businesses within San Rafael? So that's all. That's down here. Once we know. What the number is, what what the tax measure, the parcel tax measure would raise, and what we have to fill in, then we would go for the capital. Yeah, we've kind of been in waiting mode for yeah. twenty years, waiting for something to actually make an ask on. So that's also been part of the problem. <laughs> well, one piece about the pickle weed is, uh, in the same way that we have some money set aside for downtown, we have about. Uh, we have two million for pickle weed. Um, that's not the building is newer; it's in much better condition. Um, but we do have an issue of space. Two million is not enough to expand the envelope, but we can creatively push into the community center to expand both staff and also the bathrooms are massive. So we're looking at. All right. Hi, Becky, can you hear us? Yes, it looks like we're back in business here. <laughs> Did we have any uh, members of the public that were also draft? I looks like we see one here. Yeah, let me check. Um, let's see here. It looks like uh, it looks like she's still on. So we still have the one attendee here, yes. Okay. Are okay. You, let you start over again. <laughs> okay. So, um, as 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 I say, a long time resident, very interested in this project, and and I had a conversation with Jill a few days ago, and I said, I I hope I'm still, you know, ambulatory by the time this goes. <laughs> so, um, so two questions. First of all, uh, Larkspur. Larkspur are I mean, five million dollars from the state. Larks was a tiny town compared to uh, to city of San Rafael, um, and they you're right they have the land. It's been a you know it's it's a, a very a very relatively simple project to, to build something with, but it's uh, it certainly worked out for them with a much smaller population. 
um, the thing that bothers me about this is the fact that the library project is suddenly now being rolled in in the community center. And I get, I get all of the things you've said. I think it's for me, based on again living here a long time, how feasible is it that we're going to get the support from people to pay now, you know, to, to raise the funds for this eighty million dollars for the for a parcel tax, whatever it's going to be. That is going to be a really, you know, I, I hear your terminology, the heavy lift. I think it's going to be a monumental thing to get that right. Is there, is there anything in with your consultants that would give you, give you a course that you can come up with that kind of money in this, in this age? Well, um, I think there, you, I think the, we've seen from the survey results of small and only the sampling that there is interest, but no, but we still haven't defined what that is in the sense of what is the amount of parcel tax? And that's that's a big question. And that is the work we have to do between now and the end of the year is to be able to say in a draft to all the voters, here's what we're going to be asking you for. Are you in favor of that? So um we don't know, it's in a, but they feel that of the 10 years or that they've been working with the city of San Rafael, we've got, this is kind of the best shot we've got at this point. The other thing I want to make about um, the Larkspur Library, there is state funding, but you when you, you're awarded the state money, you have to have it funded and ready to go. And that's why Larkspur got that money, because they were at a point where when that money was available to the state, they could prove that they were going to start the construction within, it's usually within a year. We're not obviously, you're right, I'm not sure when this is going to happen, but um, so I think there is other funding sources, but they do have to have a project almost like shovel ready or other grant funding. But I, that's the question we have. We, we won't know that until we really uh, begin trying to get 4,200 signatures. We're going to have to be able to, when we go to be ask the public to support this with their signature, it's going to have to describe this initiative and it's going to have to say, this is what we estimate that the parcel tax would be. Joe, when we did the survey, we had the architects do a cost analysis. Right. That's where we got, and that was in 2026 dollars, because that's maybe mm -hmm. when we'd be breaking ground. And then we had some um, tax consultants come in and figure out what that would be for the parcel tax. So we did have a sense of that, and I don't recall what it was. We didn't get to that two thirds, right. but we did, you know, yes. get yeah. over the yes. Thank majority. You. Yeah. So, yeah, the survey picked pretty healthily over yeah. this. The we got over fifty percent yeah. pretty solidly, mm -hmm. very comfortably. Yeah. So if that, in fact, I I forgot that that mm -hmm. that was already testing some numbers that were based on the current estimates, and so. that was only for so you know that was split sample, so that right. Carnegie and Albert Park were separate, right. but that didn't include. Pickle weed or right, exactly shining up the party exactly. So that was really only the money needed for this project. Yeah. But that's a, we have a start yeah. that we know yeah. we pulled that well. Yeah. And, and the opposition the uh, negatives didn't bring it below that 50% either. So thank you. Hopefully. Um, well, I think it seems great. Um, I was on the uh, subcommittee. Um, that worked with Noel Tam in 2021. So mm -hmm. I'm familiar with those plans and we vetted them extensively. It's yes. lots of meetings and hours. Um, really interesting how so many communities are doing the, the community center library combo. Um, and this site is really uniquely placed within sort of there's schools all around us, but the Noel communities. Um, uh, looks beautiful. Um, I love watching it go up. Um, so I, I personally think it's great. Um, I think this with this commission, it sounds like we're we're behind it. Um, without speaking for everybody, but it sounds like we are. Um, I I won't go into, I have so many questions about this citizens initiative process. Um, I'm very familiar with all the parcel tax process and bond. Um, as a point of comparison, I was just looking. I think the San Rafael City Schools recent bond measure was in the hundreds of millions, and it mm -hmm. passed pretty handily. And that was on top of a Santa Fe City School bond yep. from just seven, I think, years before that yep. also yep. passed pretty handily. So yep. I do think the time is right. Yep. Um, I, I would agree and concur with whatever you're polling and telling you that, that our community is ready to invest. Um, 
I will Google citizen initiative. <laughs> and, <laughs> you, you know, I'm, information. please do. I it will. sounds sure. really fascinating. And it I, is. Um, it is. I, I love that there's a way around that. 66 and the, and the third is hard. Yeah. It is. Um, that's tricky. Um, if there's a way, is there, if you, so my one question actually is if you get to that and you do the multi-month process of getting the city to get this on a ballot, um, if if they say no, is it too late to put a regular parcel tax on the ballot? You mean if the citizens initiative uh -huh. isn't able to qualify, mm -hmm. does the city, yeah. Yeah, the city has, my understanding is July or August would be the cutoff for okay. the city to put something on the ballot. It's a clock ticking, but yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. I, yeah. um, well, I'm we have one question for you guys. Yeah. Um, What's important for us to do is to talk to as many groups in, in advance to get a vision going. We are going to be talking to the, you know, I think the Center Health School Board because Invitation's the best form of flattery. They've done a terrific job in what they've done to enhance our, our buildings in the school. Uh, we're gonna to talk to the Center Health Federation of Neighborhoods um, and, and any other groups you think we should be talking about just to get, it, what I've found in these you get it right out front, let everybody have their comments and stuff. You do a lot of empathetic listening, but the more people that we get talking about this, and then when you're asking for signatures, you start to move this forward. It's not a surprise. But so if any of you have any idea of groups we should talk to, that would be very helpful for us. And you know what we're saying to groups is, well, here's who we present it to. We present it to the friends of the library, the trustees, and Parks and Rec Commission as we we build these uh, presentations, we want to be able to say that we've at least gotten input from stakeholders within the community. If you think of anybody groups we should talk to, let us know. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Talk to the county library. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You will do that. Yeah. I mean they've been we don't have already partners, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe there's something yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Never well, and the, the other one that I just want to mention, Cheryl and I have been talking about, because it comes up, you've got a lot of residents in Terra Linda that have been, you know, and we've wow. had very su terrific success with the Northgate um, yeah, library annex. Great. And we are included on the future plan. And that's, that's my point. Yeah. Library. What you want to be able to say to voters is that, you know, we're looking at the entire 21st century services needs for San Rafael. We've got a great start at Temple Week. I think the developer has made a commitment to in the new Northgate, you know, that could be a really great location. And then this would be the third one. So we are being cognizant that it's really three locations. And fortunately, I'm sure that developer will, you know, as an example, that's that they're going to do a nice job up there. We continue to look at pickleweed and we can do this. Now we're really showing the community that we have. The breadth of services that you and, and you guys need to be done these programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and effort. No, thank, thank you. you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> didn't mean to hog up your whole meeting, but no. we really appreciate it. It's a great. And I'll I'll send you. Yeah, uh, I'll send it to mm -hmm. you, and you can distribute it. But it's you. it's just from our consultant. It's just kind of yeah. the ABCs of a citizens initiative. Wonderful. It's good to know. So, yeah. All right. Thanks. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The mommy Uber president. Yeah. Oh, the Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
have done a great job. And we are seeing some bounce back post COVID. So a lot of our programs were filling, uh, particularly in childcare early in the season. We had a strong attendance in June. I think things kind of tapered off in July and August. We noticed a lot of people are going back on vacation again. So there's a lot of travel, a lot of sports. Uh, all in all, I think we had a very successful season. So a big shout out to all, uh, all of our staff. Um, also, aquatics, I should give a shout out to them. I know that their um, swim lessons just built up really, really quickly. They did a great job of staffing up. Um, as you're aware, we um, do no longer operate in healthy pools, so we were able to focus a lot of energy specifically on the Terra Limited Pool and program standards. Um, I also want to thank uh, all of you, for two of you actually in particular, as well as Gila for attending the July Park and Recreation Tour. I uh, really think we had an opportunity to visit a couple parks. We visited uh, Terra Linda, Peacock Gap, as you know, Michael Lee Park, and uh, we are continuing to work on the Peacock Gap design project. So I want to let you know that uh, we're planning to uh, hopefully release an RFP for design in October. We're hopeful that that will uh, lead to some good results. We'll have a designer on board, hopefully sometime in December, and then that should line us up to start that community outreach and design process for the play area redesign sometime in spring to meet on the floor. So we'll keep you posted on that process and hopefully be able to bring you some final design sets sometime in spring. Um, also on the share, we're excited. This hasn't been officially you know, released yet, but we did hear back from the state that the National Park Service um, has approved the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. So that's uh, that's a really significant development for us. You know, we were very optimistic we received it. Uh, it's been about a year now that we've been waiting to hear back from the National Park Service on this. Um, and like I mentioned, we're still kind of waiting. We want to make sure that um, we've heard back. Just we got an email. Is that's official enough for me? We still want to get that letter and make sure that we're coordinating the release of that information to the community. We're very optimistic we should be able to uh, get a press release out to the department soon. So we're excited about that. Um, we're also hoping to hear back from Caltrans for the Clean California grant that we applied for. Um, we've heard that we may hear back as soon as next week on um, whether or not that grant funding will be awarded. Um, there's a refresher of the LWCF is a $4.2 million grant. Uh, and the Clean California, we, we requested about $4.1 million. We believe that the total scope of work here is somewhere in the 10 to $11 million range, just depending on how uh, the final design comes together, as well as what big company can. So the, the city will have some responsibility for funding a portion of the project, most likely. It's just unclear exactly how much, depending on uh, how things come together. Uh, we're at about 65% design for that project. I think we're hoping to uh, release that for bids for construction sometime in spring 2024 and hopefully begin construction in 2024. Um, we recently hired a new program coordinator, um, Azadeh Honormont, who is going to be working here at the San Rafael Community Center. Um, she's going to be responsible for all programs here, and a large portion of that is going to be focusing on older adult programs. So I think we as a city, we've been kind of looking at where where do we fit in in the community with the older adult programs that we're providing? And we're continuing those conversations right now, both with the Golden Airs, uh, as well as other community partners, age-friendly Santa Rita Task Force, uh, and really trying to be a little forward thinking about how we continue to provide those programs and services moving forward. Um, so we'll keep you, again, we'll keep you posted on uh, any developments there, but we're excited to have Azadeh here Azade is not new to the city. She's actually been working in our child care programs over at Parkside uh, Preschool. So she uh, has experience in recreation with the city of El Cerrito prior to that and jumped right in. We, she, she attended the Gerstle Park movie in the park. She attended the senior fair. She was at Porch Fest. Um, she's been really picking up and quickly and we're really excited to have her on board. Um, there was a new public art exhibit installed on Monday at City Hall. It's in City Hall lobby. Uh, it is a youth uh, exhibit. Uh, it was completed by third graders from Royal Dell Elementary School. And they worked with um, uh, our CDD department, as well as uh, my plan. They worked with uh, lawyers from Housing and Urban Development. And it was a really cool project. We did a special presentation at City Council on Monday and did a, uh, an exhibit grand opening and it's, it's, if you get a chance to go up and take a look at it, uh, it's a really cool exhibit, and it really focuses on fair housing in our community. Uh, that's one of the first, uh, and is the first public art review board project that's not all the way end to end. So excited that that uh, process is up and running, and, and really excited about some outcomes. 
Uh, on that note of art, we've got a call for, call for artists. Proposals are due on October 2nd right now. We're looking for exhibitors for the 2024 calendar year. We're, we're taking a slightly different approach to how we request our exhibits. There's some postcards in the lobby here if you want to grab one, if you know anyone who might be interested in exhibiting for any artists that you want to share that with. Um, so, let's see, the fall programs are up and running. I, I encourage you to check out the website, check out our online registration page if you're interested in those programs. I think we've talked about those. I think the last couple of things I want to mention is the movies in the park. Um, we've already had two movies in the park. Uh, Crystal Park had around 150 attendees. Okay. Uh, Peacock Gap Park, similar, around 150 attendees. And then tomorrow night at Pickle Week Park, uh, where it's, it's Super Mario Brothers in Spanish mm -hmm. with English subtitles. Uh, we've been doing uh, community outreach engagement before the movies. So we're going to have quite a few of our city departments and staff team there with cotton candy and popcorn and snacks and goodies and all kinds of fun things to do as well as sharing information with the community. That's gonna kick off around five o'clock. I know there's a lot of other um, community groups, organizations that are gonna be there as well. So really excited about it. It's been fun. It's been, uh, we take, we've taken, I think, um, a growth approach to this event and added on more ways to outreach to the community. And I think that's been a really great thing for us. And hopefully the community uh, gets, gets some really fun experiences on it as well. Um, we're also sharing that um, Library Foundation video in the trailers to make sure that that's spread as well. <laughs> Take that, that captive <laughs> audience on this. Exactly. <laughs> and I think the last thing I wanted to mention is I just wanted to um, you know, mention here and recognize that Commissioner Machado, uh, October is potentially your last meeting with the Park and Recreation Commission. So we're not saying goodbye yet, but I just wanted to acknowledge that and um, thank you for 12 years of service at this point in time. Uh, and I'll also just say we are going to hopefully get a chance to acknowledge you in some other ways uh, across the city. So uh, on that note, we do have some vacancies on the Park and Recreation Commission right now. So we're actively recruiting. Um, if you know of anyone who may be interested in stepping into a role, uh, there, there will be a vacancy for your seat. Um, I know that um, Commissioner Emerson, I need to check in with mm -hmm. her. October is also the end of her term. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I'll be, uh, she is eligible to reapply if she's interested and have that conversation yet. But I just want to make sure that you are all aware that uh, there's vacancies we're, we're recruiting, uh, not only for this commission, but for I think like five or six other board commissions, there's quite a few opportunities to get involved in civic engagement. So since you're already here and you're interested in this, maybe you know other people who might also be interested. I recently perused the entire list with someone who is interested. He had never heard of the Commission at all. And he said he wanted to get involved. I said, why well, isn't it an idea? <laughs> we went through it together, and he's very excited. So I don't know where it helps you. Um, and then, yeah, anything else that you reviewed? That was pretty comprehensive. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. well, thank you. Right. Uh, do you guys have any uh, next agenda item? I don't know if it's a separate agenda item. Oh, right. comment on staff report, Becky? Or are you guys? Sorry, you guys first. Oh. I jumped off the gym. No comment. Um, well, I, 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 I just say one thing that I really appreciate being part of this for the last four years. It's been fun. And it's, it's funny how you kind of grow and learn, and then all of a sudden it's like, I'm pretty good at this, and now I get to leave. <laughs> 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 but anyhow. Uh, it, it's, and I, but I think staff has gotten better in a lot in the 12 years that I have been here and they grow and, and put more things in, in place. And it's, it's great to see. It really is great to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Any public comment, Becky? No, we do not have any attendees at this time. Okay. Uh, Susie left. <laughs> Oh, me. Um, okay, then Commissioner Reports. Anything to report on? Um, I have not been to a movie night, but I heard they're great. I had a lot of friends go to the Park one and they were thrilled. Um, uh, and then, yeah, that's I think all I have to report on. I feel like I had a lot more to say and it's all gone. <laughs> um, I am headed to the Youth and Arts 
there's a youth and arts fundraiser on 4th Street tonight at Tam Commons. If anybody wants to support youth and arts, community partner. Um, public comment? No, we don't have anybody. So I think that's it. That I think we're adjourning. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you, Becky. Uh, journey at seven eighteen. Thanks, Becky.